You alright everyone? Um, I am here in Newcastle today for Newcastle versus Bournemouth. So three Newcastle games in a row have been nil on the channel. Um, I've cut it a bit fine. Just uh, just a monument now. And um, I'm making my way to the ground. I've cut it a bit late, so um, you'll probably see me get straight into the match now. But I got a feeling. I got a feeling we might get a result today. Um, obviously disappointing after the Luton game. But to get back, um, the draw from that one one four two down was pretty decent. Um, so probably not going to have any paint or Greg reviews today, but yeah, we'll see how we get on. Um, I'm going to quickly go with, I think both teams are going to score. Um, I'm going to go with 2-1. 3-1 to an extent, but I think 2-1. I think Bournemouth will score. Um, but I think we should have... Uh, we should have enough today. Um, it's the same back line as it was against Forest. Um, in midfield as well. I think the only change is Barnes for Isaac. Um, and Gordon's our striker today. We don't have any recognised striker at all in the team, so that'll be interesting to see how we get on. But yeah, I'll see you in a few. Some advice if you come to uh, a Newcastle home game, come early, don't do what I did. <laughs> Finally, and what a joke that was 20 minutes in the field, but I haven't been at the races recently, so um, I'll learn for next time. Obviously, come a bit earlier, but um. 10 minutes to go now, so I've got it. Looking forward to it. See if I can get something from this.
for Newcastle. Um, tried my best to get as many videos of the first half. The Brav got a few good saves. Um, this kept winning basically, but it's quite hard in the Gallagher where I'm sitting. But um, no, Newcastle need to come out much better in the second half because um, we should we should be two or three now down third play at Bournemouth. Um, maybe in the better team in the first half. I just think we're uh, and I just think we're missing something up front. I really feel that we need to bring on the mental for Burn, but whether he'll do that, I don't know. But hopefully, I can get some more videos in the first half. Hopefully, some Newcastle goals. See you in a bit. I think he was offside. Feisty now. Get the fucking tape wasted! <laughs> 
come on. Oh. You know what? Steve, that was a good game of football, though. Look at them. You go look at how many players left in the then so it was 2-2 for Newcastle versus Bournemouth um, I thought um, from the get-go Bournemouth were the better team um, they had much more intensity um, they wanted to win the game more than Newcastle um, and we were lucky to get the 2-2 draw I thought Bournemouth played really well especially in the first half um, if it wasn't for Martin Dubravka um, from those two saves um, we would have probably been 4-1 down, I think, overall. Um, and there's a lot of people that I've seen on social media having a go at Dubravka recently. Um, yes, maybe he's not as good as Pope in terms of his distribution because I think we rely quite heavily on Pope in terms of getting the ball out of the defence. It's what happened a bit last season, which made us so successful. But to be honest, I don't think our defence has been as good as it has been last year. I mean, we had one of the best defensive records last season. Um, and this season, you can see for whatever reason, um, it's affected with. So I don't think I don't think the negativity towards the Bravka is fair. Um, whether he's sort of a, a long-term replacement for when for Pope said maybe we should have went and got a a better goalkeeper in January, who knows, but I think for certain games this season, he's kept more alive. Um, so yeah, I think I think some of the criticism towards him is a little bit unfair, but then I can also understand it. I mean, the first goal, I didn't see it because my view was, uh, there's people standing in front of us, so that didn't help, but it looked like it was a slip from him, and it was really unlucky. Um, and then Solanke, who really impressed me, just, um, takes advantage of it and just slots it in um, for the penalty um, I mean I'm going to be biased and say it was a penalty but from looking on match of the day um, Shaw was in an offside position which I didn't see um, I actually thought the penalty was on Bruno um, Bruno was getting his, um, his shirt pulled on the penalty spot and I thought that was the penalty they were giving him to Um but I must say, Gordon took it well. Um, but then a lapse of concentration from um, Samuel uh, for the second goal. Um, I suppose you could argue that was um, Burns' fault. And I don't think he had a good game. I know there's a lot of stiff on him at the moment. Um, and I think Livermento should at least get some starts in some games. I worry for next week um, if we're going to play Burn against Saka. I'm very worried for that game. Um, the one thing I would say though, um, to maybe his, his defense and the defense as a whole this season, I don't think the three that we've got at the moment, which is Miley, Bruno and Longstaff, I think we're sort of kicking ourselves in the foot because none of those three is really a defensive midfielder. And last season, we had somebody that could slot into that defensive midfield role. And then you would either have, for example, Bruno or Joe Linton or whoever that would allow them to go forward. I, I mean, I think Longstaff can do that role, personally. But 
he's been put onto like sort of this like um the left or the right hand side and then he goes and assists the fullback um or the winger in that position and then that leaves a gap. And I don't think Bruno's a defensive midfielder. I think he's more creative going forward. And then with Miley as well, Miley's played really well for us, but Miley's not a defensive midfielder. Miley's like a um a midfielder that will just go and attack. Um Hopefully with Tonali coming back next season, that might make us more, I want to say defensively solid, but when we had Tonali in the team, he wasn't really a defensive midfielder. Um, but I think it's an area that Newcastle maybe need to look at, along with the fullbacks next season. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I thought we were a bit, like I said earlier, I, I thought um, in terms of we're intensity today, Bournemouth just bossed it. Um, and I thought they were unlucky not to get a win, but hey, Matt Ritchie with a, a last-minute equaliser, it was fantastic and it was great to see. Um, and it it was nice to see Neto with his hands on his head at the end because a lot of teams recently um, have learned the, the trick of Newcastle from last year where we've been wasting time and Neto was wasting a lot of time during the game. And when the 10 minutes came through for the added time, I thought that was fair. Um I spoke with a Bournemouth fan um, in the pub after the game and he said he said um, he thought that the, the referee was on our side. I would actually disagree with that. Um, I know a lot of Bournemouth fans will probably disagree with what I'm saying, but I thought he was really balanced. I thought he was very poor. Um, I didn't think he was a I didn't think it was a good referee in performance for from either team. Um, but there was a lot of fouls in the game and um, I just thought some of the decisions he made for both Newcastle and Bournemouth were really poor. Um, I don't think he was in favour of any team. Um, but I've, I'm not a massive fan of that. I think he's to the Australian referee. Um, I was at the Man City game last year where we drove 3 3. And he almost sent Trippier off. I think he fouled. Was it De Bruyne? I can't remember. But he, he nearly sent him off for that. And I thought it was a really poor decision um, before it went to VAR. But. Um, no, it was a good game overall. It was disappointing that it was only a draw for us. Um, another draw at home against a team that's in the bottom half. But Bournemouth fans, I think, um, if there's any of you that are watching, I think you will be fine this season. I really like the manager. I've always liked the manager from um, when you brought him in. I think he's gonna. Um, I think he's gonna take you onto the next level. I think. I think if you can keep this intensity um, going all season, you know. Outside shot of getting top half, maybe. Um, with some of the teams, including us, that aren't playing particularly well. So who knows? But I mean, I think he's, I think he's wanted to, uh, to, to definitely improve you. As for us, I mean, I think we need to take the, um, the FA Cup seriously. Um, I think if we can get seventh this season, um, that's a good season for Newcastle. Um, obviously with the injuries that we've had and Tenali getting suspended, um, I think Europe took it out of where and obviously getting um knocked out of the Carabao Cup. I think that was potentially a blessing in disguise. Um, less games, if you know what I mean. So, um, yeah, he's got to take Eddie Howe. He's got to take the uh, FA Cup seriously now. But I think he needs to also. He needs to be a bit more, um, I think, pragmatic in terms of bringing on substitutes. He takes, he's been a victim of that this season. Victim is probably the wrong word, but I remember specifically the Liverpool game at home. Um, he made changes like he took Tenali off, for example, um, and it cost with the game. And um, just with a day, I thought. I know Burns got a lot of stick, and I do like Burn, but he should have come off at half time, and I don't think Eddie Howe's willing to do that in terms of taking players off at half time. I would have certainly took him off because a lot of the pressure down the left hand side it came from Sameo, um, and they realised that Burns the weakness on that side, and then obviously when you've got somebody like Barnes um, or Gordon, they don't necessarily track back, and Botman and Shaw aren't necessarily going to come over and try and cover Burn. I think Burn would work in a, weirdly enough, I think Dan Burn would work in a three at the back. Obviously, you've got to take a midfielder out or a striker or a winger out for that. 
and I know it's a it's a Steve Bruce old tactic that I used to hate, but I generally do think that Burn in a free with Shaw and Botman and Tino on the left would work much better. Um, I don't think he's going to change that now, but I just think if you're going to have Burn in the team, put him in a free at the back um, rather than having him as the left back. But that's my opinion. Let us know what you think. Um, if you did enjoy the video, um, please make sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel, it's greatly appreciated. Um, thank you again for all the support that was on the previous video with the Fulham game and the uh, the Nottingham Forest game. If there's any Nottingham Forest fans that are still watching, it was very nice to get all your uh, your feedback and comments from that, despite it being a 3-1 defeat to uh, Newcastle that day, but we got revenge on you. Sorry to remind you of that, but um, yeah, I'm looking to do more of these this year. Um, basically, whenever I get a chance to go to a game, so... Um, and I'm also going to be going to um, an abroad fixture next week, so look out for that video when it comes out. I think you will enjoy it. But thanks for watching the video. Take it easy. Stay safe. Bye, everyone.